Hey there, this is Pastor Robert of the COG Equity Podcast, available wherever you podcast. And I want to share with you just some great advice for pastors. Now, I can't take credit for this. I was taught this and told this uh, by several great pastors and leaders uh, in the church, one of them being uh, Archbishop Quanell Miller and uh, the late Bishop Derek W. Hutchins Sr., also Dr. Sammy G. Ellis, presiding elder J. O. Williams Sr., and even new bishop of the 11th Episcopal District of the AMB Church, Bishop Marvin C. Zanders II, and also my buddy, the late great Bishop Preston Williams Sr. But there's one person that I first heard say this before I was even a pastor, and that was the late great Bishop Thomas E. Chanel. Because whether you're Baptist, AME, AME Zion, Church of God in Christ, Church of God, Apostolic, non denominational, interdenominational, Methodist, Presbyterian, uh, 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 Southern Baptist, Missionary Baptist, whatever it, you might be, you need to learn this. And this is some good advice for you. This is not just always saying just because you get called or appointed to a church as the pastor doesn't mean <laughs> that you're the pastor. Because understand something, that, that was so, so profound and then he started to, and if you knew Bishop Thomas E. Shalom, see, you knew his style of talking, and uh, you just got to be sitting back, chewing the bat or whatever, maybe in the green room, one of the state conventions and ministers meetings, but he would often say, a lot of times these guys go here to these churches and they want to come with their vision and they want to come with their agenda and maybe the pastor passed or the previous pastor passed or maybe he was put out or maybe he retired or Maybe they've been without a pastor for a while. But understand something. Before you must understand, before you got there, before they called you, before you were appointed, somebody was pastor in that church. It might be a mother, it might be a deacon, it might be a family, it might be a clerk back there in the office. Somebody was running that church. And so you don't need to go in there with your own vision. The Lord showed me a vision for the church. Now I get out of here with all that. I know, I know, I know that sounds, you know, that, that doesn't sound deep, but I'm just telling the truth. I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to help you, young and old pastor. Listen, I know the Lord gives us all visions and dreams and visions of what we want to do, but understand something, you're not going to do any of that until you have the consent and the authority and the, the uh, uh, what should I say, the influence of the people there, the people that's really there at the church running it. So all you need to do is go there and preach the gospel. You'll build the church. That deacon, that mother, that clerk, that whoever may eventually come on along. Make them your right hand man. Make them your your, your right hand. Ask them every day. What you think? What you think? Involve them. Then again, I've seen them for some time. <laughs> they don't ever let go. <laughs> They're still there. Chuck them, but guess what? You have a much successful pastorate if you're not sitting there fighting because you want to do this with the people that's been there want to do something else. You got to think about it too. If they've had several pastors even over the last 40, 50 years and every pastor came there with their own vision changing everything, changing their name, doing all the stuff, they tired of that. So don't worry about it. When I pastored my first church and going to be Church of God on the uh, 7th Avenue there, right across from the projects there, the church had been started by my uh, cousin, Bishop Milton Russell back in the late 30s. His wife, Mother Geneva Russell was still there. I was about 27 years old. First church. Got a point. Church had been about, they're about 65, 70 years. Okay. The previous pastor tore it up. Then he left. And they were gone with almost a year, several months without a pastor. And most everybody else left. So it was Mother Russell and about four or five people left there carrying the church, having church. Mother Russell was the church mother, the church clerk, or sometimes the organist. Kept the lights on, the water on, the gas on. So when I got there, when I got there, I said, okay. Now, in the denomination I was in, Church of God, you, they didn't, they said you couldn't put women on the pastor's council. Well, okay. But guess what? One, two, three, three of those women, Mother Russell, Sister Virginia, and Sister Plumbing, and the Deacon Bernard Russell, and there was one other Deacon there. Guess what? I put those five that stayed, I made them my pastor's counsel. Sure did. And let me tell you something. Before I did anything, 
I would say, hey, what y'all think about this? What you think about that? All I did was go in there and preach. And it went from five to 25. It on, it on up and on up. Even had a big conference uh, in the year 2000, bringing in national artists and everything like that, speakers. But listen, the thing about it was, even to the point that Mother Russell lived about six blocks down from the church, and I would go by there and sit with her sometimes and just talk and kind of, you know, throw things out there. And she, she wasn't the pastor fighter because her husband was a pastor. The deceased husband was a pastor. But I knew that she had the influence. She had children there. She had grandchildren there. She had great-grandchildren there. She was a pillar in the community. Very quiet, very soft-spoken. When I was, uh, the first summer I was there, I was teaching school, Cougar Creek High School. And that summer, we decided to do for one month for evangelism, dress down every Sunday. We were going out, and we'd be evangelizing and everything. Okay. So I was preaching in T-shirt, jeans, cowboy boots, tennis shoes, whatever. And so people felt comfortable coming in. It worked good, you know. So people started coming. The next year, from the Memphis things started going so good, I didn't go back to teaching. I went full time. <clears throat> the next summer, I went from the time school was out, the Sunday after school was out, all the way to the Sunday before school, dressed that. But people really loved this. Folks was wearing some of the women wearing little pants, suits, and we dressed. You know, it was just, it was all over. We we were, we weren't worried about that. So that so it was going so good. And the church was growing so good, I wasn't going to say anything about it's ended, it's the last Sunday, but the dress down. I'm just going to kind of dismiss church that Sunday. And that Sunday morning, <laughs> I'm still getting tickled about this. That Sunday morning, and she never does this, but she sat on the second row. She said, I'm about to dismiss. She says, Excuse me, Pastor. I said, Yes, yes, ma'am, Mother Russell. And she got it with her cane and she said, So, Pastor, uh, so this the last Sunday for dress down? I said, Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the next Sunday, we go back to dressing like we go into church. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, okay, I just want to get it straight. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> when she said that, all I said was, the church mother has spoken. Let the church say amen and govern yourselves accordingly. <laughs> See, mother was 80, 87 years old. Mother did, she went along with it for a while, but she was they weren't like the women coming in there and the britches, you know how to talk. But listen, I didn't get mad. I didn't rebuke her. I didn't go off and say, yo, we're going to do it. No. I said, and I just laughed just like I'm doing it. I said, the mother has spoken. And we didn't have no problem. Now, if somebody came, you know, just that, that wasn't the problem. But I'm just saying, a lot of times we just try to force things on people that they don't want. Whether you think the Lord told you or not, the Lord ain't told them. If you want to learn to get the influence, once that person dies and once that group that's running it loses the influence and other people join the church and now you have that influence, then, maybe then, you can become really the pastor. But it will save you a lot of heartache, save you a lot of trouble, and save you a lot of disappointment. This is Pastor Robert, host of the COG Equity Podcast. I hope this little advice for pastors. Share this with somebody. It may help them. Whether they've been pastor a long time or not. Because, you know, some people just got to church and they already making waves. you just been there two months, straighten up. <laughs> you better learn to get along if you want to get along. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Check us out. The TOG Equity Podcast. Available on X, YouTube, Facebook, Rumble, and on all available podcasts, wherever you podcast. This is Pastor Robert. God bless you. I'll see you next time.